Hello everybody and happy Thanksgiving week, I guess we would say, um, as we prepare with Christ the King, Christ the King of the universe, which is always that last uh, Sunday in, in November, but well, actually it's not the last Sunday in November this year, there's another Sunday, but it's the last Sunday of what we call the liturgical year. So we're be actually beginning the church new year as as we uh, finish up this this uh, this year, this week. Um, this Sunday and then also this coming week and then we'll start Advent with this coming uh, Sunday. So as we think about a little bit about Christ the King of the Universe, let us read our reading for today from our great feast day today. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own? Or have others said this about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king? For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have today, April, uh, just a little reminder for, of, of what happened a number of years ago. April 2005, Catholics were experiencing an experience that we'd never experienced before in our lives, especially for myself. I was a seminarian at that time, um, had three more years or something of seminary. And I remember that day vividly in April when our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, who would later become a saint, passed away. For three decades, we had known no other Pope. I knew no other Pope, and many people did not for so many years. 27 years, Pope John Paul II was Pope. And he was such a, like a larger than life figure, an actor when he was a young man. Um, he really had this charisma about him. He traveled all over the world. And that's why many people think about him as John Paul the Great for many other reasons as well. Because he was also a man of great intelligence in many languages, um, great theologian philosophy, and uh, of course a great understanding of the human person. Now, as we experience this conclave, and that's what um, when the uh, cardinals come together to vote, that was the conclave. And so this is the first time really we were going to experience that. And I remember the excitement, of course, of being a seminarian and then uh, this whole pageantry of the cardinals and all these traditions as the cardinals uh, have that final mass before they're locked into the Sistine Chapel and they make their final decisions on who will be the Pope. And I remember and we can all remember, and certainly the, the Cardinals at that time remembered, the Dean of the College of Cardinals was at that time a man named Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. His father, when in Nazi Germany during the World War II, was one of the dissenters against the Nazis. He publicly and also privately stood up against the Nazis at that particular time because of that he had to move his family all over the place in Germany. Many people may not have known that about Cardinal Ratzinger, but that was uh, the truth about his his family and how they suffered at that time for the truth. And as he would come up there to give that homily, and of course a very important homily, you know, when they have to make a decision like that before they're all locked in um, into the Sistine Chapel, that beautiful cha chapel, which I'm sure many of you probably have seen, uh, he warned against a, the world against what he said was a dictatorship of relativism. Uh, that does not recognize anything as definitive and whose goal is one's own ego and desires. So he warned that our world, Western culture especially, was heading towards this dictatorship, we could say. Um, this, we all know what a dictatorship is. So it's a country that where somebody like uh, controls the people by force. Uh, dictatorship of relativism, that means that there's no truth, basically. So, in contrast to this, Jesus himself in our gospel today is crowned with thorns. 
he's given this crown of thorns and of course the great suffering that came from that and humiliation and there he stands before a powerful worldly leader at that time Pontius Pilate a Roman and the Roman leader says asks him you know to defend himself are you a king and he says I come into the world to testify to the truth and everyone who believes in the truth listens to my voice there is objective truth Jesus is telling us today I come to testify to the truth there is truth and those who believe in the truth those who are seeking the truth in their life you know even if they not be they not be given the gift of of knowing Christ, Christ through their faith are, are belong to me and and I am their I am their truth they listen to my voice some things are objectively that means some things are always right and always wrong now we can always <clears throat> look at particular details in people's lives and that that make it more difficult to do the right thing but that doesn't mean that things are right and wrong i mean you can't judge people's um intentions what's going on in their heart but we can judge people's actions and we have to at times you know in a sense that a society has to say that killing is wrong etc and many other things are just wrong right so there are things that are right and things that are wrong and, and we can as a society just say well it's all what we call relative it doesn't matter you know it, it's all everyone has their own truth these things are not up for debate and this is as john paul ii would say and as our tradition says is part of what we call the natural law the natural law is god's own law which is written in our hearts okay and that can be known by people whatever faith or no faith they have wherever they are in the world if they're in the middle of the jungle if they're living in a civilized quote-unquote civilized society um, with a lot of money etc they should be able to see from nature and from the way that god has ordered the world a certain truth okay that's called the natural law and this is objective truth to those words Pilate says when jesus says uh, those who hear my voice listen to my voice, um, belong to the truth. And to those words that Jesus says, it's not recorded here in this particular uh, ex excerpt, excerpt of, of the passage. Um, Pilate says, truth, what is truth? So he would be maybe like our society today and some people who say, you know, what is truth? And why is it important for anyone to have, you may have your truth, I have my truth. But the question is, what is a society what would a world be without truth, without some objective truth? Now, that doesn't mean that, that there are, that everything is, is black and white. That's not true, necessarily. But there are some things that are black and white. For example, killing is wrong. And that's one of the many uh, truths that we know. What, what would happen if our world did not have any objective truths, the Ten Commandments, etc., that we at least lived our society based on. What would happen is a world would become chaos and anything and everything would be up for grabs. Anything and everything would be possible. What we know as human life, the dignity of the human person, even protection of our planet would all be up for grabs. And someone might say, well, nature is to be taken care of. Well, that's not my truth, you know? So we can go that way. Or obviously with human life, some people would say, well, Human life is important, and other people would say, well, it's not as important as you think. So there has to be, in order for, to have a civilized society, we have to have truth. And Jesus comes to tell us that, we're, that we use the truth. Everything can change in a society that doesn't have objective truth. Today, we proclaim with the whole church every, every year at this time that Jesus indeed is our king, the king of the universe whether he's recognized or not, and he will come to establish his kingdom someday. Uh, he is the beginning and the end. That was what we'll say in one of the readings from Revelation today, tomorrow. And he is both truth, and he's also love. So obviously when we speak the truth, we should do so with love, with compassion too, to others. But that doesn't mean that there isn't truth. We have to, we have to speak it, and we have to live it. The truth has a name. His name is Jesus Christ. God is love, as we all know, but God is also truth. 
and he's also beauty too. So all those things are ways in which we need to live in our life. It's our responsibility to speak the truth using, of, of course, in a way that's beautiful, but then also loving. May we in our lives not give in to, to the society which says there is no truth, but in fact say, yes, no, there is truth. And there are certain things which are always true. Now, we're not going to maybe judge people's intentions, but we can judge actions because actions show forth um, either they're either right or wrong in society, and they have to be. And we know that in order for us to have a, any kind of healthy community or society, we have to have certain things that we believe. May God help us to believe and to have courage to speak up, do so with love and with compassion. Uh, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we, I give thanks for all of you, for our parish, and for all the blessings that God has continued to bestow upon us. The Harvest Festival was very successful. I'm not sure exactly the numbers now with the expenses, but something around $9,000, so that was great. Um, we also have coming up Giving Tuesday. So Giving Tuesday is, is a time when we especially can give to different charities or nonprofits. Remember our school and our parish, which you will see links for on our Facebook page and also through Flock Notes, where you can give during this given Tuesday and help out our parish. And during that time, you know, if you reach a certain amount, if you, maybe if you would normally give during Christmas, you can give uh, this Tuesday. And that what happens is if you get to a certain amount, then it will be doubled, you know, um, by um, some of the, the uh, social media outlets, etc. And, and that, that, that run um, the advertisements during this Giving Tuesday. So may God bless you and um, continue to bless your family as we celebrate this Thanksgiving. Take care.